What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon and I've thought to bring you guys along to show you a little bit of how I personally love to do my cooking. I just love to turn my brain off, get lost in the kitchen. You know, what better way to show you what I'm about than bringing you guys along and you can see my process. Today we're going to be making a Vietnamese beef pho. It's one of my favorite recipes. It's super healthy and there's nothing much more other than to get into it so let's get it so first step i've got some beef bones here chuck them into some boiling water that's going to clean the bones it's going to give us a nice clear broth oh with that i've got beef brisket you know ideally you want to get get it whole the whole brisket it was quite kind of pricey and I don't feel like having pho over and over again. So this is going to just boil for 10, 50, it's going to boil for 15 minutes. We'll give it 15 minutes. That's going to get all the blood, all the impurities out. We're going to discard that water and move on to the next step. I always love to be proactive. So instead of waiting 10 minutes to do the next step, we'll go on to the next one. So in this broth, we need onions, ginger, and garlic and we need to get this charred up i have an induction stove if you have a gas stove chuck on the gas but what i'm gonna do i got a gas barbie outside we're just gonna chuck on there and we really need that char it's like one of the best flavors that you can get and it separates a normal chicken noodle soup or beef soup it completely separates it it's like incredible the vietnamese how they came up with foot legendary for prep it i'm just gonna half it straight half it you don't need to remove the skin or do anything fancy with it and i've got a tray here just to make everything smooth man cooking is simple uncomplicated and those dishes that follow those values are usually the best Ginger, just slicing it down the middle. And to be honest, there's no set amount what or how much that you need to use. Use how much, whatever you feel like. That's the golden rule. You like it, use it. Right, easy as ginger, garlic, onion. All just need to get charred up. I told you guys I wasn't lying when I said it was a beautiful Saturday afternoon. You know, I got the ocean right there. Brother on the left of me, he's fishing. And we got this massive dirt mound that I moved yesterday. I spent two hours moving this. Bro, any laborers out there or anyone that moves dirt for a living, you guys are actually goaded. That's so hard to move. It took me two hours and my back almost felt like I was breaking. See, the best way to cook, you just, just chuck that on. Tongs, no tongs. Use tongs if you're scared. And I should actually look at the camera. Living life through the camera. Just making sure everything's flat. And saying goodbye for a couple minutes. 15 minutes is up. Get that steam. It's going to be super hot. I'm going to try my best to aim into the colander. Ah. And so next step, we just want to remove some of those, uh, it's like bone residue in between the cracks of the bones. I'll put the brisket off to the side and then clean the pot out. You see all that, that's all scum. So clean the pot out, clean the bones. Let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. That's pretty much what we want. We can go deeper, especially with these. Go deeper. Onions are looking good. Bro. Bro. It's alright. The spices I'm going to be using are coriander seeds, star anise, cinnamon sticks and black cardamom so i'm just gonna chuck this in a pan to toast up 
pan's preheated, so I wouldn't even need anything more than a minute. You can read here the, what was that, the cardamom? No, the coriander seeds. You can already hear the coriander seeds doing this thing. I can already smell it, you can really see the smoke. Ah, oh, it smells incredible. That's toasted, that goes into the pot. This is my tray of finished aromatics. You can see this is the kind of color that we want on all our veg, onion, garlic, and ginger. And so we're just chucking all of that into. And the washed, cleaned meat. That goes in too. I was going to do the meat separate because these are quite thin. Usually you get the, the whole ones and then they can cook for a lot longer. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these briskets out and just let the bones run. So they will... They'll be doing its thing for at least a couple hours. Oh, I baited, baited, I baited myself so hard. Have a motherfucking sp a spice ball, I didn't even use it. Always use a spice ball. That's all right. And then what I'm gonna do now is cover this with water. Traditionally fried, you can have these rolling for 8, 12, 16 hours. If you have one of these pressure cookers, instant pots, you just need a couple hours depending how much time that you can put into the broth. So what's the time now? It's like 1.45, 2.45, 3.45. How many hours is that? Three. We got three hours. Three hours for the bones. And then you just leave it. And then this does all the magic. It's like cooking for three hours. It's a hyperbolic time chamber pot. So it says three hours, but it's in reality, cooks like 60% quicker or something like that. And um, yeah, we can just chill out, enjoy the rest of the day, and then come back when this broth is ready. I almost forgot one of the most important parts. This is rock sugar. You can find this at an Asian grocery store. It tastes way like a billion times sweeter than normal sugar. I think it's more unrefined. It's hard. It tastes like candy. You just chuck it in and that's going to sweeten up the broth. Give it a little bit more balance. I'm going to get a bit of my veggie prep done now. So I've got spring onion. Onion. And coriander so depends how you like them prepped I kind of just go with the rough angle chop you know nothing too over complicated and I have a little container that I put them in I'll say I like like a medium amount of spring onion, so not like ODing on it, but you know you can taste that it's there. Maybe I'll go for one more. I use the rest of this one as well. It's quite nice because it gives um, like a, a different kind of freshness. We'll do the actual onion. So you do tend to find sliced brown onions or white onions in pho. Literally just top and tail it, remove the skin. I cannot get enough of this in my pho. I'll have this whole onion in my pho because I love it. I love it. 
it brings like crunch and just a whole lot of deliciousness and so the key is to not cry or cut yourself there's no key it's not a sharp knife it's not the right onion this onion doesn't make me cry but the, a smaller onion might make me cry and I'll be bawling my eyes out I can't stop when you chop this be careful don't go super fast like the people on YouTube or TV just take your time your, your brain is off bro you don't want to be cutting yourself that's just way more work claw use your knuckle Trying to cut this as thin as we can. Flip over on the side and again. So I've got a bowl with water and these onions go in. I reckon I find these if I don't chuck them in the water before I make my pho or if I don't chuck them in the water and I chuck them directly in my pho it's it, it's like it's like way too pungent and gassy and it doesn't really make my stomach feel that great and you know if you're making pho on the fly all you need to do is chuck these in water you know at least two minutes and then it just removes a lot of that onioniness onioniness or the harshness that comes from raw onion Got a little bit of white rice. Sometimes I just love having white rice as a snack. It's medium grain and it slaps. Three hours is a long time to wait for food. So make sure you're snacking in between. I got some rice and I'm gonna make a chicken wrap. Next on our veggie prep is veggie prep, fresh herbs, onion prep, spring onions done, onions sliced, next is coriander. Seriously, I can't get enough of this in my foot. And what I like to do, instead of picking it out, the stem holds more, hold on. Can that focus? The actual stem of the coriander holds more coriander flavor than the leaves. So I just love chopping all of it up and heaps of it. Doesn't have to be super fine. That's what I like to do. Get in a ball, scrunch it up. We're just running the knife through it. Once or twice. Lengthways. And what's the other way? Horizontal ways. And that's it. And that can live in the same bowl as the spring onion. All right, so three hours is up. I'm just gonna put in my brisket now. You can see how tiny these are. And these will take, you know, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes at, at most. So I'm gonna put these in. So it's been 30, 35 minutes. It's time to pull out our brisket and bones so it depends what you can go and find you can see all the excess vegetables there I like to have a rubbish bin rubbish bin rubbish bag on deck and I just dispose of them and it just makes it a little bit easier because the colander that I have is not that not that big it's more I think it's better suited picking up those spices but these big ones that we can fish out, you should really 
fish them out and it will save you a lot of splashes. There's most of the big vegetables done, so I'm going to fish out the bones as well. And what makes this dish so amazing, oh well, look at that. All that meat came off the bone, didn't have to do anything to it. And that's all edible, that is so delicious. It's just been boiling away in that delicious broth. Ah, accumulating flavor. And um, this is like heavily slept on by Western society because damn bro, like this meat, meats are so expensive. And these are like five, six dollars a kg. These are just beef bones. You know, look, look at that. And they, they packed with connective tissue and collagen. Amazing for your skin, overall health, eyesight, just everything that we need as humans are packed in these inexpensive cuts. Everyone's sleeping on it. Don't sleep on it. Taking the meat off our bones has never been easier. Just slide it out, slide all this, that's money, slide that, no effort, look at that, no effort at all, no effort, and then this is all the meat that we're going to be use, using in our foot. So you find these in between the bones, this is, what is this, this is like, connective tissue or nerve ligament and this is like my favorite part of the egg of the entire foot process you know picking away at these bones you get look at all this meat all this meat that we can just get from these bones so inexpensive and it's look, it's ridiculous how much we actually get so we have all our liquid gold in there we still need to strain it so I've got a colander and a bigger pot Doing my best not. So for my fur, I love to get it as clear as I can. So I go first through the colander, which is a lot wider, and then a fine mesh strainer. For our liquid gold. You can see how much it truly picks up. So we're at the end process of our fur. We have the golden broth. The only thing that we have left to do is season it. We need to season it with fish sauce. So just that's probably like half a cup right there, we'll probably need more. And you can season it with more rock sugar, fish sauce or salt. Yeah, that's fire. That's fire. A little bit more fish sauce and then we'll be sweet. For the noodles, I've just got some rice stick noodles. It's like the Three Chef brand. These are like one of my favorites. There's different widths of the noodles, I'm pretty sure. This is the one millimeter. I think it might go up all the way up to like five or 10. But the one millimeter cooks the quickest. All you gotta do is drop it in some boiling water and test when it's done. Here's my setup, I've got water at a rapid boil, this noodle holder thingy, and the broth, I put it in a little pot for how many servings that I want. So first is the noodles, these are cooked, and I just want these to heat back up into the broth. So try my best. I like heaps of noodles, so I'm adding like maybe a serving in a bit. A little strain, strain, shake, strain, shake. Over to our bowl. That's some of the neck and brisket. You're now gonna get some of that connective tissue. Pouring the broth. Hearty amount of soup. 
spring onion and coriander to finish. All right, look at that. That is beautiful. We finished another video. I've got my big delicious bowl of pho. Very green, lots of coriander. I've got two dipping sauces, a traditional hoisin and a sriracha. I've chopped up a little bit of garlic and put a little bit of chili oil in here. This is beautiful, a little spice kick. No fresh chilies today. And I don't like putting the dipping sauces into the actual broth because we spend so much time making it as good as it can be, right? We've done all those steps and it just ruins it. You, you can do that with like pho that's not so great. Maybe at the mall, you can buy pho from the mall. But pho is only as good as the broth is. And what I like to do when I taste my first pho, wherever it is, get some of that broth. Oh, yeah, yeah, all those, if it hits those underlying flavors, you have an amazing pho. And uh, I'm going to get into this. Maybe I'll do some mukbang, Jesus, maybe I'll do some mukbang content a little bit later on. you got to let me know if you want to see that. But for now, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.